All right, week one, grades, Bears versus Titans. I always like when the grades come out. I try to get this to you guys as soon as humanly possible because it confirms or shows me I was wrong on certain things. And there's a lot of things to take away from the game. There's so much to break down on that game. And I want to get into all that. <laughs> I just have to pick and choose because there's so much. We did say before the game, number one, the defense needed to step up and help Caleb Williams adjust into the league. They did it. Fantastic. They shouldn't have had to do so much, but the reality is they did it. They did what needed to be done to be able to win this game. Scary that we had to come back from 17-0, score 24 straight unanswered points. The last 17 points essentially were all defensive. The first three at the end of the first half were really DeAndre Carter returning that kick, and then the offense still couldn't punch it in. So that's number one. The defense did their job. Really, really love that. Number two. I said the defensive line needed to step up and be the staple of this unit to be able to make us feel better. Holy crap, they did that. This defensive line. Now, I understand the Titans' offensive line is not the best in the league. I get that. But we also have to remember on the other side of it, the, the Titans' defensive line and their whole unit there is completely revamped and really solid. They're going to be one of the best in the league, especially on that front with Jeffrey Simmons and all the pieces they have there. So there's good and bad to take from all this. The defensive line was a shining star on this game. They absolutely played up to it. They did everything they needed to do. And if they can keep that up all year, this team could win a Super Bowl on the defensive line alone. Just from the defensive line. And I mean that. Now, obviously, there's other pieces that are already solid. The cornerbacks, the safeties. And if we're going to be real about things, the safeties did not play well. Kevin Byard, Jaquan Brisker, they didn't have a good game. Neither did Kyler Gordon. But Jalen Johnson, Tyreek Stevenson... TJ Edwards played so phenomenally well that this team stayed in the game. There were spurts when they went up 7-0 on us, when they when they were starting and they were pushing the ball. It, it made me worried. I was worried. Everyone was worried. But there's so many goods to take from this. And then last, Caleb Williams is getting crapped on right now by the rest of the league. That's fine. Let them crap on him. We said it takes time for a rookie quarterback. There's the whole thing that went out 0-14-1, blah, 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 blah. We didn't have to trade a haul to get our number one overall pick. We added pieces. We did the things to bring the team up to speed to be able to add, not subtract. We multiplied. We made this team stronger. So it wasn't like we were giving away the haul to get the number one pick. That being said, the thing that's not being pointed out this morning, Caleb Williams didn't lose this game. The muff pump by Valus Jones made things look like, oh, crap. Those are the type of things that lose this type of game. Close games where it's going to be defensive, those things blow games for you. That was worrisome. If Caleb was throwing the ball, if he was throwing interceptions, if he was fumbling the ball, this would have been a whole different story. But the fact that he didn't have 100 yards passing but managed the game okay, Matt Eberflew said it in his press conference after the game. We want every possession to end with a kick, either an extra point, a field goal, or a punt not turning the ball over. Caleb Williams did that. I had to go back and look. There hasn't been a first overall pick that hasn't had a turnover in his first game since Jared Goff. And Jared Goff didn't start the first game of the first season. He had time to adapt. He didn't start his game until November of his rookie year. So very different. That was 2016. Caleb Williams didn't throw an interception. He didn't fumble the ball. There was a snap fumble. He recovered it. He managed that game well. So let the league crap on him. If this is Caleb Williams' floor and the defense plays like this, we're going to be just fine. Let me get my face out of the way and we'll pull up here. Now, this is going to shock some people. This is going to be a little crazy because I said it yesterday and some people, no, Coleman Shelton was absolute trash. He was absolute garbage. And I get it. He, there was one play that was really bad. He went to help, which was one already being a double-teamed play. And then the blitzer came around on the inside. It looked terrible. You can't allow that. You have to be aware, especially as the center. You have to be the general on the field. But the offensive studs of the game, I'm going to bring my face on. It's weird to, to talk the whole time and not have my face up there. Offensive studs of the game, Nate Davis, which is one of the things we pointed out we need to see. Now, we'll put the narrative to bed. We'll, we'll silence that. Matt Eberflew said it wasn't Nate Davis being yanked. That rumor went around. People were saying that Nate Davis got yanked from the game. He said afterwards both Nate Davis uh, and um, – freak. I get brain farts too. 
Uh, Ryan Bates were both dealing with injuries, and they planned on, from the beginning, splitting them 50-50 reps. That's what the plan was. So the fact that they pulled him out, this evidence is that, that it wasn't because of him. So he played only 18 snaps, but he had a 73.7 grade. Now, during the preseason, I highlighted those above 70, 75 PFF grade. These are PFF grades. During the season, I've said this all along, that 65 and above are your starters. Those are guys you want to be starting games when they have grades of 65 and above. So I showed you here, Coleman Shelton's grade was 64.5. Kari Blazing game, this is the offensive studs first, 66, and then all the way working up. And some of these low snaps, Kari Blazing game, Mercedes Lewis, Valus Jones, didn't have a lot of snaps. So, that I mean, it's all in context. Really, it's the guys that had more snaps that you need to pay attention to, that they had great games. But look at the offensive line. Everyone's crapping on the offensive line right now. The reality is it wasn't terrible it was bad. There, there were a lot, a lot more pressures. There were five pressures allowed in the game. And more than that, they were making Caleb have to hurry. But a lot of that's on Caleb. Too. It was rookie jitters. So we'll get, we'll get to that in a second. But Nate Davis, Darnell Wright, Tevin Jenkins, uh, even Braxton Jones wasn't bad. And we'll get to his blocking grade in a minute. But those were the offensive studs of the game. Then we moved on to... The passive blocking and the run blocking. Because I want to show the offense here what everyone's talking about. So pass blocking, those above 70. Look at all these guys. Darnell Wright, Braxton Jones, Travis Homer, Cole Komet, Nate Davis, and Gerald Everett. All had really good pass blocking grades for the game. Okay, so the, it wasn't as bad as people were making it sound. But run blocking, you look here, you got Kerry Blazing game, Coleman Shelton, Cole Komet, Tevin Jenkins, and Nate Davis. So a couple of those guys are on both lists, and those are the guys that you really want to see. You look above, Nate Davis there at number five on the top. 73 overall grades, 70 run blocks, 73 pass block. That's that's what you want to see. So Nate Davis did really well. Hopefully he feels completely up to speed. He's 100% because that's the Nate Davis that we need on this team. So overall, it wasn't as bad as people were making it sound. It, it wasn't fantastic. I mean... <laughs> But if you're going to have me grade the offensive line for this game, I'm going to give it a C. I'm not going to give it a D or an F, but I'm not going to give it an A or a B. It was right in the middle. There were spurts of really good, but a lot of it did come down uh, to Caleb Williams and his rookie game as well. We move on to the offensive duds, and this is where he comes in. DeAndre Carter, Caleb Williams, and Romo Dunze. All right? For all below 50 grade, which you don't want to see. Now, this is something I absolutely just chalk up to a rookie in his rookie game. I've never seen Caleb Williams in a game play that poorly, and I've analyzed a ton of tape on Caleb Williams. And it's really easy for those guys out there right now to be crapping on him and saying, well, oh, we shouldn't have traded Justin Fields. And blah. If there's anyone that could say anything about that, <laughs> I could be the guy for that. But I'm not because I'm realistic about all this. I analyze and I break this stuff down. Justin Fields looked really good. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend just a minute on this narrative. Justin Fields looked really good in his game. I said it last year. He's an ascending quarterback that's a top 15 quarterback in this league, and I truly believe that. Now, I get crapped on for that. There's a lot of crap talk in this video. <laughs> but I, I, get, I get grief for that because fans want it to be extremes. They want it to be either really terrible or really good. It's got to be one or the other. But the reality is, and I've done so many videos, it's not worth me bringing in this one, the breakdown of, of, of Justin Fields. But the reality is, he is an ascending quarterback. He's growing every year. He's a developmental quarterback. Caleb Williams is not a developmental quarterback. He's smart. He's intelligent. He has it right off the bat. This game, he looked frazzled, uh, antsy, uh, shook. I don't know what the right word is, but he didn't look comfortable he never looked comfortable he was missing passes he normally wouldn't miss he was looking out of position out of place his footwork even looked a little different am i worried that this is the quarterback you're going to see for 17 weeks in this season no we saw it in the preseason we've seen it all off season it is a lot you're a rookie quarterback number one overall in the league coming into your first game and you're facing a defensive line that's as good as the Tennessee Titans. They have a good defense. Now their offense is hot garbage. It's bad. You saw what Will Levis did. There was so much hype for him. He needs to be on his way out of the league. When you're making that poor of decisions, and if you didn't see that, I want to I don't want to spend all my time on that, but Tyreek Stevenson and some of the defenders like saying, if you're gonna make those kind of bad plays, we're gonna make you pay, like kind of rubbing the salt in the wound. But the reality is he played poorly. Will Levis gave that game to the Bears. 
Now, the Bears offense took it. We had a blocked punt. Uh, we had two interceptions that were really, really solid. Uh, on the counter, we're, we're looking for 22 was leading the league last year. We got two through one game. That's on pace for 34. I love it. So, as much as some places won't make it sound like that, or Bill Belichick's going to make him sound inaccurate, or Packers fan base is going to make him sound terrible, the reality is it was a rookie quarterback in his rookie game, first game of the year, <laughs> a lot of pressure. I'm not saying he succumbed to the pressure because he didn't lose the game. Unlike a second-year quarterback across the field from us, Will Levis did lose that game for them. All he had to do was manage it, not turn the ball over, and they would have been fine. But he lost the game. Caleb Williams didn't lose us this game. Okay, let's move to the fun part of this video. The defense. What won us the game. And my goodness, I am going to do a video on Darrell Taylor. I don't know when they get all the time. But guys, he was special in this game. 38 total snaps and a 78.6 PFF grade. But look right above him. Jalen Johnson, 70, or 92.3. Uh, Carl Williams did good. Jervon Dexter did good. Kevin Byard did okay. Uh, his grade was a little higher than I think it should have been. Andrew Billings did really good. TJ Edwards did great. Tyreek Stevenson did awesome. And Demarcus Walker's probably the player of the game for me. And unfortunately, there's always a dud side to everything. Montez Sweat, a 54.5 PFF grade. I usually do below 50. Let's point this out. I usually do below 50 PFF grade. We didn't have a single defensive player below 50 PFF grade. So that's a really good thing. Byron Cowart, who is a special, who's a uh, practice squad player who was called up. If he's our worst player of the game, I'm okay with it. Jaquan Brisker, though, had issues in his coverage, struggled in this game. I hope it's just a lapse. Hope it's just a one-game thing, and I hope he gets back to it. But Montez Sweat didn't have the best game either, but really not a terrible game either. And then last, special teams. Now, this is going to take some prefacing because I know there's a lot of people that want to chop off Valus Jones' head right now. Valus Jones is not going to get cut from this team. <laughs> telling you that right now. Valish Jones is a valuable member of this team. At the very bottom there, I'm going to specify, this is the punt and kick returns. DeAndre Carter took six of them. Valish Jones took one. He had a 55 grade because he muffed it. Now, Valish Jones' days of returning might be over. He is an absolute stud on special teams. His tackling, he's a beast. And he's turning into a very formidable running back. I know we only had two carries in this game for six yards apiece. Not bad. They're probably going to use him more. I don't know why they didn't use Kerry Blair or Khalil Herbert more. There's questions I have on this game for Shane Waldron. I know special teams is not the place to point this out, but there are questions I have. I think we were like two for 13 on third down. Where was the play calling we were ready for? Where was the scheming? Where is this offensive mastermind guru? One game. One game. That's all I'm going to keep saying. It's one game, and we won that game. I have questions about Shane Waldron at this point. Maybe it's just the way he was calling Caleb Williams' first game, and that's what I'm going to chalk it up to, that he was just playing it very conservative, that he was trying to ease him into the league. We'll go with that. All right, back to special teams. Daniel Hardy obviously had the blocked uh, punt, which was huge. Jonathan Owens returned said blocked punt for uh, the touchdown, Khalil Herbert was in on a lot of things too. Elijah Hicks was really one of the studs of our special teams, and Bayless Jones, all of them played really well. Travis Homer and Kerry Blazing Game did not play well at all in special teams, so chalk it up to what it is. All right, two things I have to point out, and then we'll move forward to further breakdowns later, but I want to make this video semi-shorter. It's turning into a long one, but this is two of the things that I said were most important. Last year, weeks 10 through 18, Jalen Johnson was number one in the league with a 23.7 NFL pass rating against him. Number 12 was Tyreek Stevenson with a 55.7 NFL pass rating against him. One of the cruxes, one of the most important parts of this season was these two getting right back to where they were. And I said in relation to that, the defensive line needs to get pressure to help them have opportunities. Well, that happened. 100% that happened in this game because of the defensive line. Here's the pass rush grades for this defensive line, and that's Demarcus Walker that's bringing down Will Levis, and that's the exact play where Will Levis threw it very erroneously, very poor decision, and Tyreek Steven took it to the house. He picked it and took it for six. But look at the pressure. These are the pressure grades, and this is what I want to show. I've got it organized by pass rush win rate. You can order it by pressures per snap, the PRP, which is PFF's way of grading it. 
Anything above eight is phenomenal to me. Phenomenal. Above 10 is absolute superstar. So a 10.9 by Darrell Taylor, it's one game. I get that. It's one game. But he looked absolutely great in this first game. And if you haven't seen, go look on Twitter. In fact, maybe I'll bring it up in another video. Play where he, I mean, his move off that right side, being able to shed the, 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 the tackle, I think it was J.C. Latham, uh, poor rookie, sorry, you've been picked on, but to be able to shed him and then to get the sack <laughs> on Will Levis, and then the rest of the team swarmed it because it was a strip sack. Sorry, i got to bring you on just to talk about this. So It was a strip sack, so the rest of the team is piling on it. He realizes he's 10 yards away because he initially had the strip sack, but then he, <laughs> while the team is pouncing on the ball, he just stands up and walks away like the Joker on Dark Knight where he's pressing the button for the hospital to blow up. He's walking away like, yeah, I did that. Like, it was <laughs> legit elite crazy like it's a crazy video to watch just the confidence that Darrell Taylor had on that but it looked really good from the entire defensive line unit these are all five of them and this is how they played now if Montez Sweat is your worst grade at 57 and he still got three pressures on 31 opportunities I'm good with that I'm really good with that 57 grade for Montez Sweat because he did create some pressure who really stepped up and showed me what they needed to this game was Demarcus Walker he had five pressures, four hits, one hurry, and a 25% pass rush win rate. To me, that was an absolutely phenomenal game by him. No sacks, but guys, this is where I've been saying and telling you, sacks are not the only stat when it comes to your pressure. All five of these guys, four of the five having a pass rush win rate over 10 is phenomenal. And the one that didn't was real close, and he had the highest pressure grade. I mean, that's... I don't know how else to say it, but this defensive line stepped up where they needed to step up. Only three sacks by this unit, but that doesn't matter. They put pressure on Will Levis all night, and they're the ones that kept them from scoring a single point in the second half. The defense stepped up, and the defensive line won this game. And last but not least on all of this, cause and effect. Last year, NFL pass rating against Jalen Johnson, 2023, 33.3, led the league. This year, Best coverage grade again, PFF number one after week one. I get it. It's one week. I get it. I keep saying that. I get it, but it needs to be pointed out. 92.0 coverage grade because he had a 2.8 NFL passer rating against him this week. Not only that, Tyreek Stevenson this week, guys. I got to keep bringing myself on here because I keep forgetting. Uh, move to top there. Not only that, he was hitting harder than before. Tyreek Stevenson is hitting hard. That was the thing. Tyreek Stevenson... Jalen Johnson is hitting hard. Tyreek Stevenson has always hit hard. So Tyreek Stevenson has been the hitter of the two. Jalen Johnson in that game, wow, he was laying some hits, and I loved watching every second of it. Tyreek Stevenson talked about how last year, the second half of the season, he had a 55 NFL pass rating against, which was 12th in the league. So far, 13th with a 78.1 coverage grade. But his NFL, I'm not going to give NFL pass rating rankings because it's one week. They take time to compile really better. But as far as grades overall, Tyreek Stevenson looked really good. 78.1 NFL or coverage grade, but 46.8 NFL pass rating against. Last year in the second half was 55. So he's taken off where he left off overall for the year because the first half of the year, it was the rookie getting adjusted. He was getting picked on. It was 100.4 overall for the year. But he's picking up where he left off, and that's what I wanted to see. So the the defensive backs, the secondary, the crucible, and the defensive line really carried this game for this team, and that's what we needed. So overall, am I upset about this game? No. We came back down 17 nothing in 124-7. Am I upset? 24-17. Am I upset about Caleb Williams and his performance? No. Like... I'm upset that it didn't go as well as he wanted. I want to see him gain that confidence and build on it and have a 300-yard game and do all that stuff and the stats and everything else, and we all want to see that. But was it critical? No. We won the game. We're 1-0. The Packers are 0-1, and they're having a hard time coping with that right now. If that's Caleb Williams' floor, I'm good with that. He protected the ball, and he allowed the rest of the team to do their job, and the defense did their job. He will throw better passes. I am 100% confident in that. I feel very good about him as a quarterback. I'm not worried that he had less than 100 yards passing at all. Let the narratives write themselves. Let people write them. Meanwhile, like I said all along, if we went 0-2, I wouldn't be panicking and this fan base shouldn't either. But people will. That's what they do. People panic over little things. 
they want to create their narrative. They want to create a picture to make it all make sense and make it perfect and put it in their little box. But the reality is the Bears won 24 to 17. Now they've got a tough test against the Texans. Then they've got a tough test against the Colts. Then they've got a tough test against the Rams. These first four weeks are what are going to define this team and the defense need to keep it stepped up. And then after that, they're going to get a little bit easier schedule to be able to get some flow and some rhythm before we hit the divisional games. This is all shaping up the way we want it to. It didn't go perfect, but overall, the team did good and they got the win. So I'm very happy with that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment. Did anything surprise you from the grades on this game? I know a lot of people are really hammering on Coleman Shelton right now. People are really hammering on Valus Jones. People are hammering on Caleb Williams. But the reality is there's more positive to take from this game than there's negative. With that, Dub Bears. <laughs>